Hi everybody, it's Mark here again. I uh, haven't got the big camera out today, so I thought I'd just do a wee quick technical video on uh, the V6. So this is a customer's car, this is a 2 liter V6 out of a Rover 75. Um, there is, I see a lot of discussion about timing belts and how to do them and stuff, so I thought I'd do this quick way of, of what I, I do. So as you can see, I've everything. This is everything changed. Uh, all tensioners, water pump, etc. Uh, you've got the two locking tools in, and the flywheel locking tools in. Okay, so everything's good. Now this is where I would disagree with people on the internet about timing tools. So as you can see. I did mark them up, so a lot of people would mark the belt and then mark the casing so you get the orientation right because the main issue with timing these engines is these two cam pulleys. These, cam, these two cam pulleys, when you loosen the bolt, uh, these will have a 2-3, to three, maybe 4 degree movement on the keyway on the cam. So that means this is slightly vernier. I know it's not a vernier pulley, but it is slightly vernier. So what you find is you do all that, you do the two tilts to the back, uh, you take everything out, you'll cycle over two times, and then everything will be good this side. So you'll have your good tension, uh, everything, all your locking bits will go in but you will find sometimes that the rear this rear locking tool won't go in and the reason for this as you can see here it's it is very very close it's actually I would say nearly there um but what I do is then before before you tighten everything up this end, set this tool in. You then will need to loosen this bolt. You can then turn this cam, or turn this cam a slight touch to get this in. And then everything is lined up that way. You can then torque this bolt down, and that means everything cam wise is timed properly to this you will find if you don't do this is that you put it back together and the car just won't be that extra wee touch smooth and silky and you even see it on the t4 sometimes on the live data that there's maybe one two degree out it's just that wee extra wee bit and that's what I find from my experience with the V6s. And that's why I always recommend people to use the time belt kit. Sorry, the time belt tools. Because marking it up just doesn't get it. Because you're always going to have a bit of variability in belts. You know, due to how stretchy they are, how tight they are. So marking it up. I get the principle of marking it up and putting everything back the way it was. But that doesn't give you the exact timing. And this is what I found in the past. So as you can see, that's just about going in. This one, again, is that, just that hair out. So I'll have to adjust that a wee touch. And then you'll find, and then I'll, I'll take it out, cycle over two times again, and try it again. And if that works out, then all good. And everything will go back together. So that's just, that's just my two cents on it. A lot of people will probably disagree with me, but I always find in the past that when you have a car, when I do that, the engine's usually pretty, pretty good. And it even, even sounds better, it goes better, and you get just all in all feels better. So if you're going to do uh, time, time belts yourself, that's my advice. Either borrow a set of uh, timing tools or buy a set. I know they're very expensive and that's why people don't buy them, but that's that's why I use them. So hopefully that helps everybody. Uh, if you disagree, if you agree, whatever, happy days, but this is the way I do it. So 
Hope that helps. Bye for now.